but in this tuner that we're going to take a quick look at, this is the um, one we were looking at earlier. It's the 901B. It has a tapped inductor. So you see the coil here, and it has all these fixed positions that are on there. And then as that I change this. And that's a T network all day because there's your two capacitors yeah. on either side with the inductor in the middle. Yeah, so as I change the inductance value here, I'm selecting a different point on the coil for the amount of inductance that I'm going to have in the circuit. And so let me just Beautiful. zoom in a little bit on here and see if I can do this right. The roller ones are set up a little different. The roller is usually off to the one side. I'm going to, Ape, I'm going to put you full screen on that camera. Yeah. Okay. So, so this better. is the guts. And let's take a look. This, this jack here is the transmitter. Mm -hmm. And so you can see the center conductor. It's, it's just grounded through the case. So there's no ground coming off of here. But you can see the center conductor comes down and it goes into our first component, which is the capacitor, right? So it's just like it, just like in the picture of the T network. And then you get a capacitance value based off of the relationship between your stator and your rotor here. So as I go fully mashed, I get or fully open, I get less capacitance. As I go fully mashed, I get more. And then on the other side of that, this, this uh, capacitor, we have another tap and you can see this, this wire just runs straight over to the other one, right? And then this same kind of circuit and it goes down and it comes down and goes right out this coax connector, which is what would go to my antenna. But there's also split here. So if I wanted to use a single wire or balanced line, mm -hmm. it's tapped there. Now, in between the connection, like I so said, the top of the T between the two capacitors, I have this wire that comes off and goes into my induction coil. The coil is connected to the various values that are here on the rotary uh, knob. But then down here at the bottom, you can see my coil goes to ground. So this is the bottom of the T, and then those two parts are the top of the T. And it's really simple to see in this particular tuner, which is why I wanted to show it. It's a really, really simple tuner. Um, <clears throat> Ken's saying what's under the black disc. So if you if you look at the black disc, what this is, it's a four to one Ruthall voltage on on. And you typically use those to balance the signal that uh, to go to, it, to go from an unbalanced. I'm sorry, I called it a non on and it's a balance. So our, the antenna that you would use for this is on this balanced line. So you'd have a balanced antenna, but the circuit on the inside is unbalanced. So you use this to achieve the balance in, in, um, in, in your, in your transmission and your signal. And then you can see it's tapped, it's center tapped and it goes to ground over here. And so the antenna tuners that we look at have something called a T network inside of them. And, um, there's Z networks, Pi networks. There's a, there's a lot of different ways that you can tune a circuit and they're called networks. When in amateur radio tuners, one manual tuners, one of the most common things that you'll see is a T network. Um, and there's a couple of different reasons. They're simple, right? So they're, they're easy to work on. They're easy to tune and they're very, very wide banded. So they work across a large range of frequencies. Now, one thing about a T network is it is not real. It's a, it's a high pass filter. So that means that when you have you have it tuned at a particular frequency, everything higher than that will pass through that network. So what it does not do is it doesn't work as like a bandpass filter where it would attenuate harmonic frequencies at higher frequencies. Um, so that's a little bit of a get you um, if you have something that generates like spurs and stuff like that. So you'll see even T networks inside your radio, but then you'll typically see like a bandpass filter uh, after it in between the T network and the antenna. Um, I just said this configuration of components used to match impedance of any antenna system. That should make sense after everything we talked about. The impedance of the transmission or receiver consists of three components arranged, or arranged in the shape of a T. Um, it's one component in series between uh, two in pair. I'm sorry. It's one component connected in series between the transmitter and receiver of the antenna and two components connected in parallel across the transmission line. These components are typically variable capacitors and inductors, and that's what we're going to look at. Um, it provides impedance transformation by adjusting the values of the capacitors and inductors to achieve a desired matching. Um, and then it just helps to maximize power transfer, and we covered that. So here's a picture that I got from 
hamradiosecrets.com. So thank you to the folks at hamradiosecrets.com. You have full attribution for this picture. And the line across the bottom is your crown. And then the line across the top is your center conductor and your transmission line. And the symbols that you see, C1 and C2, that's a symbol for a variable capacitor. So this is typically what we would see in a T network is a capacitor on the radio side. Then you would see some sort of inductance coil uh, going to ground. And then you would see a capacitor on the antenna side. Now you're not gonna have a variable inductor in the middle of the T network though. That's gonna be a fixed value inductor. <laughs> well, the, the so what we have in these tuners are, are called tapped inductors and not roller inductors, but they, they, do, they, are, they are variable. And so it's a good call because okay. that is not the schematic diagram for uh, that's why I was asking. I was like, mm. yeah, because we just looked at in at that that stuff yesterday, and I'm like, yeah, wouldn't that be a variable. So um, we're we're running short on time, so I'm really going to blow through these. So YT networks, they're they're flexible. They allow for a wide range. Um, they're efficient, and so you don't have as much loss in them as you may have in other other networks. Um, I think I mentioned earlier they're simple, so it's a simple design, easy to build, easy to work on. Um, and then adaptable, they, they can be adjusted or tuned to accommodate changes in operating conditions, uh, different frequencies, different types of uh, antennas. So they're, they're, they're just very flexible, and that's why they're so popular in these types of devices.